Time now for today's perspective. What use are mathematics? Well, to answer that question accurately, one would have to use, well, mathematics. From enabling traffic lights to function, providing the answers in your internet searches, our world today is structured largely by sums, so to understand it, we need to do the math. The question is, can a happy, fulfilled life actually be lived without them? To give us his view on that, we're joined by Stefan Bausman. Uh, Stefan, you've written a book called a Ca a coffee with Archimedes, it's out in French at the minute, uh, looking at the role mathematics play in our world mm -hmm. uh, and even at the origins. Give, bring us back to where and why we started to use numbers and maths. Yeah, so um, mathematics really started about 6,000 years ago uh, around what's now Iraq, uh, where people started for the first time to live together in larger groups. Uh, and at some point they found out that if you're trading with a lot of people and you have a lot of people in a city, then it's kind of helpful to know how much food you need, whether people are stealing from you. Uh, and if you have so much trade and you have so many people, it's impossible to keep the overview without having some kind of tool. In and mathematics was that tool. Indeed, completely practical and simple in its origins. It's become a lot more complicated since it's led to groundbreaking uh, things. We, we understand gravity, we've developed medicines, thanks to mathematics. But one mm -hmm. of the things that really surprised me in your book is to learn about a very small community in Brazil that actually live without even having numbers in their language. Yes, so they seem to be perfectly happy. They uh, don't even have a concept of suicide. That's how happy they are. Um, so they're doing great. Um, and that really only works because they're in such a small group. Um, so they trade a bit by just giving away what they want to sell and then taking as much as they want until the other person starts to complain. Um, because you are a philosopher, if you like, of mm -hmm. mathematics in many ways. And, and this example made me wonder if in society we calculate a little bit too much. Is there a negative side to, to putting a number on everything? Sure, I think in, in part because numbers um, simplify things. They leave out a lot of this human complexity that we have in, in our own relations. Um, and also numbers aren't always as perfectly objective as they can seem. They can be really misleading. Indeed, and one of the, the issues you've even brought up is the uh, correlation that people uh, th between Nicolas Cage and the number of drownings. Explain a bit to us that. <laughs> yes, so if you look at the number of movies Nicolas Cage makes in a year, then they seem to curiously go up when the number of people who drown in swimming pools also goes up. So, you know, maybe he's taking his inspiration from somewhere. You never know. Random coincidence, no? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it does beg the question as well of how much can we trust the numbers? I mean, we've seen very concrete examples with surveys when we head to general elections, you know, and you, you write mm -hmm. a lot about it in, in the US. I mean, there's that famous expression, lies, damn lies, and statistics. Yes, and that's definitely true. So statistics, by their nature, try to measure uncertainty. So, of course, they're never going to be perfectly right. Um, but at the same time, the way you choose to measure a statistic really influences the answer you're going to get. Uh, so the number on its own doesn't say anything un until you know where it comes from, who chose it, what kind of method methods they used. Indeed, and with the current actually new coronavirus, we're all concentrating on the statistics, but they're very uh, unclear at the minute. Uh, you look in your book at how uh, our human brains actually absorb mathematics and how we learn them. And it's something that we actually have somewhat innately. Yeah, so um, even babies can do some sort of math. Of course, not exactly. They'll still need to learn arithmetic, but they can see the difference between uh, five cookies and one. Um, oddly enough, not between four and one. But other than that, they do very well. That's quite surprising. That's surprising. And also there's something about our brain, the, the sequence the number is in. Whether it's on the left or the right, we see it as higher or smaller. Yeah, so naturally your brain thinks that small numbers should be on the left and large numbers should be on the right. Uh, and you respond faster if the larger number is uh, on the right. Uh, yeah, and that of course depends, I guess, on the language you speak as well. Yes. Uh, your book has been developed, I guess, for a lot of us out there that uh, run away in fear a little bit when we <laughs> hear about mathematics and, you know, breaking it down. And do you think that that's potentially a problem with mathematics is we all deal with them every day, but perhaps unaware of it? Yeah, they're, of course, they're, they're everywhere, especially nowadays. Um, and I think one of the reasons I wrote the book is because if you're in school, you don't see this. No one really tells you where it is. And also, you only get the formulas and no one ever explains what they're supposed to mean. Why did we start doing these? What's the idea behind all of this 
strange symbols you're suddenly supposed to understand. Indeed, like a lot of our music even, we write it uh, thanks to mathematics. So mm -hmm. Do you think that that's something we need to maybe teach in a different way? Uh, I think it would definitely help a lot if there is more attention to these ideas behind mathematics. Why did we uh, start doing this? What? Why did people, for example, start to use integrals? Well, they wanted to measure some kind of change and they thought, well, if we cut it up into small parts, it will be easier. Uh, and those ideas aren't particularly scary, but if you turn them into formulas that you don't explain, then they get really intimidating for a lot of people. Indeed, but you have broken a lot of them down for us. And as you say, the more we can understand the numbers, the more we can see through uh, the potential pitfalls in what we're being told. Mr. Stefan Bausman, thanks so much for coming in and telling us a bit more about having a coffee with Archimedes. Thank you.